Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can use mathematical expressions in DaVinci Resolve in order to animate properties based on the values set in other properties. So basically we can combine numbers that we manually type in ourselves or pull in from other areas, and we add or multiply them together inside of an expression, and then that gives us the final value for what something like a X or Y translation would be set to. So what we'll do here is that we'll add in extra cubes that will base some of their position values based on the settings in this original cube. And how we're going to pull in the values from this cube to the other cubes is that we're going to publish the values so that the other cubes can access them. So I'm going to right click on the translation X here and I'm going to publish it and then publish the Y as well and the Z as well. So now all these values are going to be able to be grabbed on other cubes. So let's add in a new 3D cube. Add tool, 3D, cube 3D, and let's connect it to the merge 3D here. So we can pull this cube out, but what we're really going to want to do is to have its X value be determined based on the X value of this cube one. So if we go to the transform, we can set an expression to determine the value for this X translation by right clicking on it and doing modify with an expression. So you right click to get into this menu and then you choose expression. Now over on the modifiers tab, you can click up here. You can set numbers in order to do a simple mathematical calculation. So for number input two down here, I'm gonna right click and connect it to cube 3D one and then the X offset. So that pulls that value in here. And then for number in one, we'll add one to whatever that number in two value is gonna be. So we can combine those numbers now on the number out tab. So we're gonna do number one plus number two. Now, if we click on the first cube and we adjust the X translation, you can see how the new cube follows the old one around. Its X position is always gonna be based on whatever the value for the first cube is and then adding one to it. Now, if you wanna change that additional value, you can go back to the expression on the first tab and you can change that plus one. Maybe you want it to follow at plus two instead of plus one. And then if you wanted to get more complicated, you might add in extra numbers down here. So you can have up to nine numbers for a expression and they're always represented by N and then the actual number in this list. So if you happened to be putting numbers in for point N one and point N two, and then you go over to the point expression tab to calculate them, then they would instead be represented by P1 and then the X value, or you can say P1 Y value. So you have to use P for the point, and then you have to specify whether it's an X or Y value at the end in order to use that. So you could do something like P1 X plus P1 Y, and then that would basically be how you calculate values over with the point input values. Okay, so let's create a third cube. So I'm gonna right click here and get a cube 3D. So let's add that tool in and we'll connect it here. And then what we'll do for the position of this one is that we'll connect it to the value in cube two. So let's also publish cube 3D two's value. So to do that, let's right click here and choose modify with an expression. So over on modifiers, we're gonna take the number input two, right click and connect it to and you'll see here that the expression that we created in the second cube is already an option that we can connect it to. So we're gonna connect this to the number result, and then I'm gonna click on the cube 3D expression for the X offset, and you can see that the value from this expression is feeding into the number two here, and we're gonna add one to it again. So if we go to number out here, we can do number one plus number two, and then that's gonna give us a total value of two. So the second cube is adding one to the value of the first cube and the third cube is adding one to the value of the second cube. Note that when you have your values locked in by an expression, you can't manually set them because the values are now always gonna be determined by that mathematical formula. So let's add in another value we can use. So for the Y on cube two, I'm gonna publish that and then we'll go to cube three and we're going to set an expression for the Y value. So I'm gonna modify this with an expression. We'll go to the modifiers tab, find that Y offset expression. And then for number input one, I'm gonna right click here and connect it to the cube 3D2 Y offset. Double click on the expression again, go over to the number out. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to take that value and we're going to invert it. So I'm just going to do negative number one here, which means that it's going to have the inverse number of whatever the value in cube two is. So if I raise cube two, cube three is going to sink. So if you wanted to create something like a scale where you have opposite reactions on either side of the scale, then this could give you the right effect you're looking for. The real beauty of using the expressions is that you will have precisely the value you want without ever needing to manually touch those values again. So once you get your expressions set up once, you can change the value of one item and control many other objects in the scene as you set them up to do. So in Resolve, there are a bunch of mathematical functions that you can use on these expressions, such as sine of x. But one of the more useful values that you can pull in would be the time in terms of frames. So if you want to take this cube and automatically animate its position, then what you could do is right click on the value here. And we already published it as a value. So we could unpublish that and then make this into its own expression. And then we could use the final value of that expression on cube three. But easier would be to just go down here to the bottom and click on expression. So here we can just take this and set it to uh, time. So this is going to mean that whatever the frame is, is going to be the y value for the translation for this cube. But if we wanted, we could have this go in a wave up and down by taking the sine of time. So if we take this expression, we can go throughout the timeline and we can see that basically we have this wave going on. So from the looks of things, the expression value here isn't actually being received properly by the third cube. So what we may need to do is to take this expression and put it in a separate published value. So I'm going to select it hit Control C to copy it for later, and then I'm gonna right click and remove the expression. I'm also going to remove the publish on this value. And then we're going to create an expression, the uh, way where it can be received by other property expressions. And we're gonna make this expression here. So this expression now exists as a modifier. We need to go in here, and we have expression four on cube 3D Y offset. So that's what we're going to want. And rather than adding in numbers, we're just going to go straight to the number expression tab. And then we're going to control V paste in sign of time. So we don't need any direct numbers because the time is already being pulled in from the scene. So whatever frame here is going to determine the value for this. So now that we have this set up as an expression that can be directly referenced, we can go to cube three and then we're going to do the expression three on cube 3D three Y offset just like before the third cube's Y offset. And then we're gonna right click this and remove it. We're going to right click on number one one more time and we're gonna connect it to now the Y expression on cube two. So the number result here, and now it's gonna work properly. So whatever the value is on the cube two, the inverse is going to happen on cube three. Since we already had that expression set up, it's still negative the number one, and the number one is the value that comes from the second cube. So if we wanted to take this and make it so that it can't go quite this high, what we could do is go to cube two, find the expression, and then we'll go in here, and we could say sine of time and divide that by two. So that is going to basically cut the height of this wave in half. So if we go back to frame one and we hit play, you can see it's gonna peak at about here where the bottom and the top of these two cubes meet. And that's as high as it's going to go. If we wanted to increase the speed, we could take the time and we could multiply it by two. So that should double the speed of the wave, as you can see here. So that in a nutshell is how you use mathematical expressions inside of DaVinci Resolve, at least at a basic level. So as you can see, when we adjust the position of cube one, it moves the X of cube two and cube three as well. And then cube two is running on a sine of time wave, and then cube three just uses its position as the inverse of cube two. Now that would be a lot of work to set for every single frame but by using mathematical expressions, we can calculate that on every frame and it saves us a lot of work. Also smooths out the animation for that matter. So I've been Chris, thanks for watching and I will see you guys on my future video content.